Now, when you let your um, membership to the academy lapse, oh, you had I was so to, embarrassed. You had to rejoin. Yes. When did? How did that work out? Uh, after some years of uh, of realizing that uh, you know it was something that I that I had been part of. Not really very much a part of, because I, uh, you know, you, you do a few movies, you get into it, uh, and um, anyway, I felt a, a terrible loss, and uh, and I reapplied, and I sent him a letter, and I said uh, I, I, I was I, I was foolish, and, uh, and, and was and was embarrassed, and uh, and if I and by then I had done a few more things, and I thought okay maybe I'll uh, take another shot at them. And they were generous. Uh, it's all only people. They're people over there. It's not just a uh, an organization that you, that's that you don't know anybody. They are people, and they know who you are, even if you don't know who they are. And somebody along the line said, uh, "Okay, uh, put them back in." So I am now a uh, thrilled member of the academy. Now, is it true that in your very first movie, you had to ride a horse? Naked. Yes, and, uh, and that's a uh, that was a real watershed moment for me. I remember reading in the script that this nature boy uh, that I was playing some kind of a Reflection, private uh, reflections in a golden reflections eye. in a golden eye, John Houston, and I read the script and it said rides naked through the woods on a horse, and I thought to myself, well, probably they do that with trick photography or something. I had no idea that when I arrived on the set in Italy, there early one morning, it was still frosty and chilly, and I arrived on the set in the car, and here this was this Italian extra riding around. The cameraman was setting up and trying to follow him through the trees. With the, and this guy was riding on, and I said, holy moly, that's supposed to be me. I'm not going to let that guy be do that shot. I'm, 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 I'm here I am. I'm, so I went to John Houston, and I said, I can do that. And he says, can you really, Bobby? I said, yeah, I can do that. I had, for 10 cents a ride, I'd sat on a horse and gone around the circle when I was a kid. And uh, and I and I had a theory. My theory was that you become part of the horse, and that you find a rhythm. The horse gives you a rhythm, and you get into that rhythm. You just become part of the horse. You know, that was my theory. And so the next thing I know, the wardrobe department hands me the little webbed part of the jock strap they cut off all the other binding and a roll of flesh colored tape and they gave me that for my for my uh, my modesty well I tried hard to attach this thing and it was uh, barely attached I got up on the horse I ran I drew, rode around for a little while I think the horse was warm and then the, this thing kept falling off I threw it in the bushes I said to myself Bob if you're afraid to do this you better just quit. If you cannot do this with absolute conviction and with, with without fear, then you better stop being an actor. I didn't know you were going to have to do this. Be naked? Really? Not me. But uh, here it comes, and if you're uh, not willing to do it with abandon, you better quit now. And I said, okay, let's go, and, uh, and that was the end of that. So that helped you from there on in? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen, once, gonna... once you do that, uh, <laughs> there are very few barriers uh, after that. Uh, what are you going to do, cry in a movie? Uh, nothing, nothing is worse than that. So what have you got um, coming up? You're doing a, a television series as Ray Archer. Is that real? Yeah. Yeah? It's, um, it's a television show. You're shooting show. that now? Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a Fox um, uh, network show. J.J. Uh, Abrams uh, and a, um, a, a, a Mysterioso Cop show um, with an awful lot for an audience to like. Uh, the scripts just get better and better and more. It's a vast cast of characters and events. But you're the lead guy, right? No, no, I'm not. I have a small enough job, a small enough part in this show so that I run a bar. I am, I am a, an ex-cop, retired cop that runs a bar, so much of my stuff is in the bar. And when they have enough things for me to shoot for a day or two, I go up there, I shoot, shoot my all. stuff, and come home. What a good job. It's my part-time job, I say.
And so here I am in uh, in L.A. for the opening that, of... Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. But the, the, when you first saw this movie the, the first time, was that a festival somewhere? No, a couple of months ago mm -hmm. at the Fox lot. And I saw it with a tainted audience, people who are in the movie and, or people who represented them, uh, you know, a couple of actors, producers, and so forth. I'm looking forward to seeing the movie, not tonight, when it will be with another friendly audience, uh, the premiere, but I look forward to seeing it in a week or so with a real audience who, uh, you know, you can see, you know, what the real audience reaction to this picture is. Otherwise, you know, everybody in this town, uh, in this kind of a, of a screening, are they always hoping and helpful? Well, you have the general sense that this one's going over pretty well. And this one is going over pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Be, and and it's it's an unusual movie. I mean, you've seen a lot of films. To, to be able to sort of tread, just as your character does, back and forth between comedy and tragedy, that's hard to do with a deft touch. He's the guy that does it. You see it in all of his movies. You see, if, you, if you saw Election, uh, about Schmidt and uh, Sideways, you know that that's what this guy does. He gives us comedies that are uh, really dramas wrapped uh, with uh, or the other way around. Uh, but this guy is, uh, that's his, uh, boy, that's, that's what he's become well known for. Now you've been watching the business for a long time. You've been on all, you've been up, you've been down, you've been on all different sides of it. You've played good guys and bad guys. The scripts that you are uh, praising so much, they're hard to come by, the good ones. Yes, sure they are. And is it getting worse? No, in fact, uh, gee, every time I uh, see television material, I think well, how much better it's gotten. TV has gotten better. Yes, television has gotten a lot better. In the old days, when I first started doing television, so many of those scripts were what we used to call radio scripts. Scripts that you wouldn't even... They, they could be done, the dialogue could be done, and you could just hear them and know everything that's going on. They were, in fact, scripts that had been done as radio scripts. And they just throw them on, you know, just shoot them with a picture. <laughs> That's how they were. They were radio right. scripts that that, uh, that you shot as a television show. Now uh, the material is so much better uh, on television. You get really good stuff on TV. Uh, not all of it. And, but uh, the movies but, are getting worse. But, oh, I don't know. Listen, there were always dopey movies. There was always B stuff. There was always stuff that we didn't expect much of and, uh, you know, was uh, light entertainment. Uh, but but the studios are making that now and spending hundreds of millions of dollars on them. And they got to be big, big, big blockbuster type movies for them to even uh, go make them. This movie, Correct. I'm sure, didn't cost $200 million. Uh, This movie cost a lot less. So did Jackie Brown. Cost a lot, lot less. Probably not, not probably not twenty million dollars. That doesn't seem like much for a movie these days. But uh, in both those cases, you get really superior filmmakers uh, talking to their audience and uh, and then pulling their audience in and giving them a rich experience. And uh, and it's not the uh, the two hundred million dollar uh, special effects movie. It's uh, this kind. And there are still guys who make really good movies. Uh, 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 David Lynch makes really good movies. Uh, you know, there's a lot of fine movie makers out there, better than there have ever been before. The the the, the art form is uh, is much improved. Uh, you can shoot so many more angles. You can uh, you can get so much more in a movie. When I first started, just getting the camera to roll was a big deal. You know, if if the camera was ready, are you ready? Everybody ready? Yes, everybody's ready. Ready? Roll camera. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got to do this. Okay, hold the phone, hold it, hold it, hold it. You ready? Yeah. Well, wait a minute, something else. Next thing you know, we've got to trim the arc. Next thing you know, the horse has got to be replaced. Next thing, getting the camera to roll in the old days was a real big deal. Now, they just let the camera roll. They don't even cut in between. Sometimes they say, well, let it roll. Uh, go ahead, get that thing, bring it in, do that. Okay, wham. Are you ready now? Yes. Bang, and you start shooting. It's, uh, it's a whole new ball game. Movies are better than ever. Thank you. Thank you.